Hi everyone, welcome to lecture 6. This is Introduction to Programming with Python. In this lecture, we are talking about Python object types and operator precedence. If you are new to programming, this is an important information that you should almost always remember, which is that everything in Python is an object. Everything you create in Python is actually an object, including all the variables we have been creating until now. And every variable holds an object instance. In addition, every object has a type. So basically every variable that you've been creating has a type. So what are some of the built-in object types in Python? Here I've listed all of them and we'll be covering almost, in fact, all of them in this course going forward. Today we're talking about integers, floating points and strings. So integers is an object type, which is represented by I and T as shown in Python and integers are nothing but whole numbers as shown in the example on the right. Similarly, floating point is another object type that is used to represent decimals in Python and the representation for Python is float. Strings are sequences of characters. These could be characters like that have alphabets in them or even numbers. The important part is to represent strings in Python we use quotes. It could be double quotes or single quotes. And the way it's represented in Python is str. Let's go to spider and see how these are represented in Python and what are object types and how do you find an object type for a given object. Just as always, I'm creating this variable x equals 2. And 2 is a whole number, so it's an integer, right? If I want to find the type of x, I would simply go and type this function type, type, and say x. Now, as you can see, I get i and t, which is integer, right? So this is the way it's represented in Python. Let's create another variable, y equals 2.3. So now this is a decimal, right? And the type for this object should be float. And this is what I get on the right hand side. Similarly, let me create a string. And remember, it could be represented using a double quote or a single quote. So I'm using a double quote here. Let me say this is a string, right? Now I want to know the type of my object, which is nothing but type. And it is an str, which is a representation for string. Okay, so we'll be working a lot with floating points, integers, and strings as we move forward in the course. So there are a certain a number of rules that we need to remember. So for example, what is the outcome when we are evaluating an, an expression that involves both integers and floating points? Let's find out. So let's say I'm saying a equals 8 minus 5. And both of them are integers, right? Let me find the type of A. It's an integer because obviously in the expression both the numbers involved were integers. What happens if I say A equals 8.0 minus 5? So 8.0 is a floating point although it, it represents 8 but it is a floating point because it is a decimal. And then I go and check type A. Now it's a floating point. So whenever a floating point is involved, usually the result is of the type floating point. Similarly with division, if I do an integer division, you can see the outcome is 2. It's not 2.0, which indicates that the type of this division is nothing but an integer. Right? Because we are doing an integer division here. However, if I do a normal division, which is 9 by 4, and I try to find the type, this is obviously a floating point because it cannot be divided completely. But we can go and check for a complete division, which is 8 divided by 4, and I do get a float. Right? Why? Because if you go and check 8 divided by 4, you get 2.0. 
Okay, so this was about object types and we learned about three object types today, integer, floating points and strings. Now going back to our lecture, next we'll be talking about order of operations and this is important because we'll be dealing with a lot of expressions and, and the standard rules of algebra apply in Python as well. So we do use this PEMDAS rule, which is parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition and subtraction. That's the order in which an expression is evaluated. A couple of rules that are listed here. So obviously parentheses comes first, next the exponential operator and if we are having more than one exponential operator then it's ordered right to left which I'll show you what that means. Next is the negative sign in an expression just like this and here these are all the, the multiplication and division operators and within them the order is from left to right. So this gets the, the precedence first, then the division, then the integer division and then the modulus operator and then finally addition and then subtraction. Let's look at a few examples to clarify this. Okay. Here. Okay. What happens if we have more than one exponential in my expression? The way it's evaluated is starting from right to left. The way that it'll, this expression will be evaluated would be 3 to the 2, which is 9, and then 2 to the 9, which is 512. And this is what we get. However, if you want to force some other precedence, for example, I want to force 8 to the 2. For that, I'll have to introduce these parentheses here. And as you can see, I get this result as 64. Similarly, we talked about negative signs. Let's say I have this example here and then 2 times 5. The way this expression would be evaluated is 2 times 5 multiplication and the exponential. The negative sign stays outside because we said that's how the order of precedence works. And then this becomes minus 8 and this is minus 10. So I, so. The way this expression is evaluated will give us the result as 18, minus 18. And this is what we get. So this was about order of precedence in Python. In the next lecture, we'll talk about control statements, especially the if and else statements. Thank you.